Okay, all respiration starts out with the same first step, glycolysis. It's universal, it's anaerobic, it begins the oxidation of glucose, which means you're taking the energy that's stored in the bonds of glucose and transferring it into something the cells can use, hopefully ATP. Now, along the way to do glycolysis, you actually have to spin two ATP to get your party started, but you get four back, so you net out two ATP. And it also reduces to NAD when you do glycolysis. Now, your step after glycolysis depends on if there's oxygen present or not. So glycolysis, though it's shown as one step right here, it's really 10 steps and 10 different enzymes, but one of your end products is going to be pyruvate and two reduced NAD and two ATP. Well, the ATP will get used up, that's great, but you have a finite amount of NAD, and if all of it is in the reduced state due to glycolysis, you're gonna run out. So you have to have a way to oxidize it. And fermentation allows you to do that anaerobically. What you'll end up doing to oxidize your NAD, you have to reduce something else, so you'll reduce your pyruvate into either ethanol, if you're a plant, or into lactic acid, if you're an animal, and that gets your NAD oxidized. But if you do have oxygen, there's a better way because there's more energy left in that pyruvate that you can harvest from. So aerobically, we'll go a different pathway. So following glycolysis, aerobic respiration, you will continue to oxidize your pyruvic acid, but now into what's called acetyl-CoA, again, forming more reduced NAD. Those are starting to accrue and that's good. So then you'll take your two acetyl-CoA and put them into the Krebs citric acid cycle, which will complete the oxidation of your glucose. And you're gonna generate, as a result of two turns of that, six reduced NAD and two reduced FAD and a couple of ATP. This is great, because now you can take all of your reduced NADs and FADs to the top of your electron transport chain located on the cristae, the inner membrane folds of the mighty mitochondria. There, you can drop off your high energy electrons thus oxidizing your NAD and FAD so they can be reused again. And now these high energy electrons are gonna get past this electron transport chain, which along the way, some of the coenzymes can help you concentrate hydrogen ions and take them from the matrix and push them out into the inner membrane space. And there you will concentrate hydrogens, which is a difference in concentration, charge, and pH, all of those hydrogen ions are gonna to wanna to come back into the matrix and the only way they can get in is through ATP synthase complex, thus generating a whole bunch of ATP. But the only way you can keep that chain moving is if at the bottom of the chain you have oxygen to accept those final electrons and keep everything going.